Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. It's great to have you here. So some of you might be struggling to make your photos pop in Lightroom and I might just have the answer for you. Um, and it's by using the radial filter. And I've got five great tips for you guys today. But before we get there, I want to encourage you to watch all the way to the end because down in the description, I'm leaving a Dropbox link to three or four of my radial filter presets so that you can have it. But it's password protected and the password will only be shared around about the end of the video. So you will have to stay around to get that password. Otherwise, you won't be able to access it. So um, let's get right to it. So tip number one, guys, is vignetting. So we all know what vignetting is. It's just to bring focus to a subject or darkening or lightening the edges of your photo. But I don't just use it for the edges of my photo. I use it in the middle of the photo or on the side of the photo. But let me show you. So vignetting is very easy, guys. All you're gonna do is um, take the radial filter, drag it over the couple or your subject. Um, maybe let's bring it a bit on the downside like that close it up a bit and if you press the letter O it will show you where the mask is now as you can see it's at the moment inside of the circle so I'm just going to click on invert over here um, I can see it's on there here a bit so I'm going to lift it a bit and then what I'm going to do is just um, press O again to take it away and then use the exposure to bring the sides down now you need to be subtle with this you don't want to make it look weird or um, unnatural so what you can also do is to press the letter o again and use feathering to see how much you want that to fade in or maybe go harder or softer i use it at about 40 normally but you can see clearly if i switch it off that's the before and after and the couple definitely pops more so the second tip guys is sharpening i use the radial filter for sharpening and it is just to get that bit more sharpening if you maybe miss the focus a bit with sharpening what i'll do is i'll zoom into the couple's faces and see whether or not they are sharp in this case the groom is slightly out of focus which doesn't bother me i was shooting at f2 and he was probably slightly behind uh, and um, causing him to be out of focus a bit but just to make him pop a bit more is i would take the radial filter and then just use the sharpening on it not too much and then once you zoom out you'll see his face is a bit more crisper to show it to you guys on this recording uh, it's not going to do it justice but you'll see it on your own images as soon as you do that it's just that bit more crisp. So the third tip, guys, is focus. I use the radial filter to bring more focus to a certain person or subject in my photo. Sometimes it happens that there's a person in the background and there's people at the front and maybe the exposure on the people in the front is a bit more than the person in the back. And I would then use the radial filter to make that person pop in the background. Focus, guys, is also one of my favorite radial filter um, tips. And um, in this specific image, you can see the bride was closer to the window um, or sliding door as well as the bride's mom. Um, but the bride's sister and obviously bridesmaid was a bit further back. So she was in a shadowy area, but the focus was on her. And I want to actually bring her to the front of the image, if I can call it that, or just more focus on her. So I'm going to use the radial filter again, bring it over like that. Um, see what it does in with regards to the um, mask by using the letter O. She is slanted, so I'm going to slant it with her a bit. And we can make it even smaller. There we go. Take the mask away by using the letter O again. Um, I'm just going to move it a bit to the left. And now the magic is going to come. Now you can use this in two ways. You can either use shadows or exposure. Now I sometimes use a bit of both so let's up it a bit there we go and voila so now if we look at the before and after of that radial filter let's just click on it so that's before and after before and after and what you can also do now 
is to make a second radial filter, but this time I'm gonna make it quite a bit bigger and I'm gonna invert it so it works on the outsides. If I toggle the mask, you'll see it's now working on the outsides, toggle it off, and I'm gonna make mom and sister a bit darker, like that. You can even bring down the highlights a bit. There we go. So have a look at the before and after with this one, guys. Um, this is the before. And that's the after and suddenly the focus is more on the bridesmaid in the background um, and it makes her pop so nicely and the fourth one guys is sunflare and for those of you who've been following me for a while knows that i use this in my photos and it is a lot of times just to enhance an existing sunflare or maybe to create one that didn't exist in the first place so adding a sunflare guys can be absolutely amazing when done correctly when done incorrectly, it can look cheesy, it can look fake, and you need to be very careful using this technique. But what I'll do is take a radial filter, drag it nice and big. I'll over-exaggerate this one just to show you the effect. So you can drag the exposure quite high so that you can see the areas that it's affecting. It works even better than the mask for me because sometimes the mask just doesn't show exactly what you want to do. Um, and then what I'll do is bring up the temperature. Now guys, when bringing up the temperature, if you leave the tint alone, in other words, don't use it, it might give you a bit of a green cast. So it's always good to bring a bit of magenta in as well. And then I'm gonna bring back the exposure a bit. Also important that what I use is either clarity or dehaze. So clarity will give you a hazy feel dehaze will bring it a bit like a hazy like misty feel um, and you can use the two together as well what i'm going to do now is bring the warmth back a bit and bring the exposure back a bit so that it's not too much and you have a before and an after a before and an after and the last tip i have for you guys and yes i saved the best one for last is to use the radial filter to pop faces and images, especially when you shoot into the light. So a lot of times you shoot into the light and the faces is just not popping that much. And I use the radial filter in this way. Faces is also something that you need to use very carefully. Um, and I'll show you why. I'm gonna overdo it a bit so that you can see exactly what I mean. But again, drag it over their faces. That's why I call it faces and then up the exposure. Now I'm gonna overdo it, um, just so that you can see, apart from them getting overexposed, look at the halo on the edges. If I make it a bit wider and take the radial filter away, you'll see that there's halos around them. So there's light around them that doesn't make sense. And that's the thing that you need to be careful about, especially if the couple is maybe far away in the image and, um, it shows it so much uh, more. So be very careful when using it. I would make it quite a bit smaller. Um, it doesn't really matter that it's going over there because the sky is already blown like that. And then what I'll do is I'll bring it back a bit. Just like that. Now look at this guys. Before and after. Before and after. For me this is an absolutely magic trick and it makes the couple's faces just pop so much more. I wanna show you one last image. So this image, we're gonna use quite a few of the radial filters just as a bonus. Um, so let's add maybe three or four. Let's see how many we're gonna add. So the first one, let's zoom in. Uh, the faces are quite sharp, but the groom's eyes can be sharper. So I'm gonna drag one over the groom's face, just like that. And add a bit of sharpening, there we go. Do another one, make their faces pop a bit. Just open like that, we're gonna actually make it a bit smaller. I just want the faces, just like that. Open it up a bit, there we go. And then what we're gonna do is do another one on the sun. Open up the flare a bit and let's see, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Just like that, add a bit of warmth, add a bit of magenta. We can make it slightly smaller. 
Well, let's make it bigger and see what it happens. Nah, definitely smaller. Just like that. And then the last one, what we can do is to create a vignetting. And we're gonna just go invert on the background and just vignette it ever so slightly. There we go. So I'm gonna switch off. This is now the after. I'm gonna switch off the radial filter. So we've done one, two, three, four, five radial filters in this one image. If I take them away, that's what the image looked like. It's a nice image, but I feel that's a pop. And looking at their faces now, I think what we can do is bring down the exposure a bit so that their faces isn't overexposed, but yet it pops because of that radial filter. So let's do it before and after again. There we go. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope these five tips with regards to the radial filter will help you to get more pop in your photos. I hope you saw the password. Click on the Dropbox link. Go and download those radial filter tools and tell me in the comment box, does it work for you? Was it helpful? And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.